good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukuletu Tele. Now, when it comes to insurance policies, reviewing them and reflecting on whether you have the right one is always a good idea. Stephen Isaacs from Lion of Africa Business Unit Manager for Retail in Gauteng joins me now for more. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Stephen. Thank you for having me, uh, Gugu. Let's paint the overall picture when it comes to a particular insurance covers. How to ensure that you get the right cover? They always say that it goes down to uh, an individual assessment. Mm. Absolutely, Gugu. And you know, it's so important that when the client assesses his needs in terms of what type of cover is so that he requires. And you know, with today's technology, there is so many ma ways and means that the client can get the cover either through direct market mm. or through the old traditional broker. So it's important for the client to say, what are my needs? and I need to get the right covers in the event of a claim that there are no issues in terms of you are not covered for whatever in circumstance, uh, circumstance that has happened. In pursuit yeah. for the right cover, they always say you don't necessarily go with the first quote you get. Does that stem true for insurance as well? Very, very true. The cheapest quote is not always the best quote. Mm. Um, yes, I know and understand where the uh, consumer is coming from, that everybody tries to save a bit of money but the cheapest quote is not always necessarily the best quote. So what you need to do is, again, it depends whether you go direct or whether you go with your traditional insurance broker, make sure that you've got the right cover that you are willing to pay for, that that cover is in place. Let's touch on that, uh, the right cover, because uh, so often there are different types of covers for whatever particular product that you're looking for. How does that, again, relate back to your needs? So if I can give you an example, so you've got a motor vehicle that you bought maybe five, six, seven years ago, the vehicle is totally paid up, so you've got to ask yourself, do I need a full comprehensive cover, mm. or perhaps can I go just for, for third party fire and, th fire and theft cover? What is my need at the time? And perhaps if I want to save a bit of money, then I say, well, let's, let me take the lesser cover. If I do manage to bump into somebody else, there will be cover available for that. I can then manage to to repair my own vehicle. So you've got to take that balance and say, what is it that's important for you at that particular moment? So yeah. we've touched on the overview, but mm -hmm. uh, the important and the crux of the matter here is how often to review your insurance cover. As you've alluded to, you own a vehicle for what, seven years plus? Uh, I'm sure the option might have changed from the date of purchase versus three years into owning the vehicle yeah. to the date of when it's, it's paid up. So how often should insurance policies be reviewed? That's very important. And again, if I can just elaborate a little bit, there are two contacts that we need to look at. In other words, there's your monthly contact, which is normally paid by a debit order. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, uh, those type of contacts are reviewed on a month to month basis. And it's important that when the client needs to realize that if he doesn't pay his premium for two months, there is no cover. Two months? Two months, there is no cover, you know? So with a monthly policy, however, there is what we refer to as an anniversary date. In other words, once a year, you will have a look, take a, a relook in terms of the cover that you've got, but nothing prevents you though that where you've purchased assets or where you've deposed of certain assets, you need to, to do that on a regular basis. But at least once a year, you have to take stock of your cover and discuss that with your insurance company, discuss that with your broker. On the other hand, you've got an annual policy where again, being annual, you only have to look at it once a year mm -hmm. to make sure again that you've got the necessary cover in place or where you've purchased additional items as a TV or perhaps a kitchen appliances, that those are included. And in many instances, Google is that what the client does is that they buy certain items, but they don't immediately look at the cover. Mm. They think because my cover is coming up in two or three months, I can adjust it then. But importantly, what happens if there's a claim at that stage? So as soon as you get that flat screen TV, it, uh, and it might get stolen two weeks later, ensure that you update your insurance cover. Ensure that you update your cover because you could just find that you, get, you have a problem where your insurance cover, the sum insured is undervalued and you don't get the full replacement cost. So as soon as you purchase, advise immediately. Let's yeah. touch on that value. Does that determination mm. always lie in the hand of the insurer? In other words, you insure it at market value or at the value at which it was purchased? And does it differ for the various assets where others depreciate and others appreciate? That's a very important question. So if I purchased an item two years ago, for me to replace that item today could either cost less or it could cost a little bit more. And it's always important that the customer insures at today's value. Mm. It doesn't matter if you paid two or three thousand two or three years ago. 
if that TV is going to cost, and I'm just using an example of a TV, if that's going to cost 5000 today to replace, that is the value that you need to insure. And it's important, it's up to the insured, up to the client, to make sure that they've got the right value, not the insurance company, not the broker. The broker there to advise, mm. but it's a client that's going to make that final decision. Am I happy with the sum insured for my contents, for my vehicle? Because if there is a claim and then again the replacement value, that is what I expect to, uh, to be paid out. Mm. It's yeah. interesting, you're adding a lot of responsibilities mm. here to the obviously uh, stressed out uh, client, but uh, I take it uh, one needs to take care of the assets that they feel that they definitely, want to protect. Definitely. You've touched on household items mm. briefly as well as vehicles. What about jewellery? Jewellery, um, again, a very, very important and sometimes an, an issue that's been neg neglected by the insured. So again, if I can give you some examples, in terms of household contents, there's a lot of insurance company that will provide you a certain amount of cover, provided the item does not leave the house. Mm. As soon as it leaves the house, then you need a bit of different cover. And then it's important to make sure is that item insured at the right value. And we know what's currently happening with the Rand dollar exchange. Yes. So again, get a proper valuation. Go to a jeweler, get the valuation, provide that certificate to the insurance company. And that will give peace of mind to the customer that in event of a claim the item gets stolen, misplaced, etc., they'll get the true value in terms of the item, provided it is insured correctly. Let's touch on immovable property and maybe to bring it closer to home. We know about the fires that have been raging through uh, the Cape Town mountains and many people whose homes have been affected. In a scenario like that, uh, uh, how often does one need to ensure that they have adequate quiet cover, number one, to rebuild their home or find another home, as well as the contents in there, and the risk profile? Because clearly if you are at risk of a flood, I'm sure, that's also something that needs to be taken into consideration. Absolutely, and it is so important, again, if you look at it in terms of what's happening in the Captain fires at the moment, the first question that I need to ask, do I have insurance cover? Did I pay my premiums? Mm. Because if I didn't pay my premiums, guess what? You cannot claim, you know? And again, is the replacement value, is that going to be enough to rebuild my house? Maybe I need have to ne move to a total new area, so that some insured at today's value, and that's what I emphasize again, it's got to be insured at today's value because that's what you're going to need to replace or to reinstate that particular property. Mm. And bearing in mind, again, it's up to the insurance company. They decide, um, do we replace, do we repair? And it could be quite a difficult, uh, call it a difficult type of claim. And then we say, Mr. Client, we're rather going to pay you cash in lieu. Here's some money, go and replace. And that offer may not be enough, Google to rebuild your, your property again to what it was before, mm. before the fire happened. What about yeah. your risk profile? Because mm. people grow up, their lives change, you move from being single to getting married, having children. Does that impact your risk profile and should you update your uh, 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 insurance as, as those developments happen in your life? I was hoping you were not going to ask me that <laughs> question. You know. so, but again, such a valid question in terms of the risk profile. And of course, in terms of insurance company, how do we determine premiums? and we have to do it based on the risk profile. And we refer to sometimes as client as multi-claimants. Mm. So where you find that the client has claimed quite a bit in a particular year or over the past year, the profile of that particular client does change. So it may then call for a different premium versus a normal client that does not claim. So the risk profile is very, very important. So for argument's sake, if you move from one area that's perhaps a low crime type of area mm. to a higher crime area, it's going to cause for a different evaluation in terms of that particular client, that risk profile, and you may have to pay additional premium. So let the insurance company know. Keep them yeah. updated at Keep all times. Keep them updated at all times. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's almost time for us to get to our slot mm -hmm. where we uh, get significant takeaway points uh, from you. But I also wanted to touch on another area of uh, life insurance, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, is that also something that needs to be reviewed as you do progress on with your life? Life insurance, similar to short-term insurance, must be reviewed at all times. Again, especially in terms of beneficiaries, sometimes we just take out a life policy, mm. we go lock it up in the cupboard and we forget about it. So again, similar to a short-term insurance policy, look at your life policy update and perhaps maybe the cover that you think in 10, 20 years time is not going to be adequate. Yes, it may call for an additional premium, but rather than discuss that with your advisor and maybe you want to up the premium and so on. Uh, something else, Luke, if I can briefly touch on also, 
is another issue that's currently uh, burning for all the customers, load shedding. Yes. Again, make sure that when load shedding appears, and especially from a theft perspective, that your alarm is armed, that you advise your alarm company. You know, anything can happen, and then again, you could find there is no cover. How, how yeah. does that work? And maybe let's uh, quickly uh, discuss mm. that because in, it works uh, with re in relation to the terminology often used by insurance yeah. companies where before you get insured, uh, you have to have some kind of alarm system as well as some burglar system in place. But if load shedding takes place and it's beyond your control and you're not aware of the particular schedule and let's say something bad does happen and your property gets uh, uh, stolen or taken or damaged away from you, mm. what kind of recourse do you have with the insurance company should they not want to pay out? As long as you can demonstrate to the insurance company that you have done everything within your power. Mm. In other words, your alarm battery for argument's sake, it only lasts for about six to five hours. Make sure that that battery is full. So when the load shedding does occur, which I think in maximum time is normally four hours, make sure your battery life is full. As long as you can demonstrate to the company that you have done and there's still an incident, the company will be more considered to say, let's meet you halfway in terms of anything that has happened. Lots and lots of loopholes, <laughs> clearly, Stephen. <laughs> and maybe that does bring us to the time now in the show where we take a look at the uh, significant uh, pointers not to miss from this evening's show. <music> Notes to self, Stephen. Uh, the key mm. considerations, let's highlight about five that uh, viewers need to be sure of when it comes to updating mm. the insurance covers. Key for me, Always, always make sure that your premiums are paid, paid, number one. Secondly, if you've purchased items throughout the year, you cannot wait until the next renewal date. Advise your company immediately because that could affect your payout in the event of a claim. If you have a claim, advise your company within 30 days as to when the accident actually occurred. Sometimes we forget about it and mm. it happens two or three months later. Were you involved in a motor vehicle accident and it is not your fault? Obtain the third party details immediately. Um, there's the old saying that if it's not my fault, but I'm not going to pay my excess, I need to recover. But if you don't provide the third party details, it takes years and years to recover that money. And the last point, Google, is to make sure that you always adequately insert. Mm. Uh, make sure that you insure at today's value, replacement value. Again, you could find that there is a problem if you're not fully insured at today's price and you may not get the full value when it comes to a claim. Stephen, thank you so much for your insights today and teaching us how to avoid those loopholes when it comes to yeah. not updating your insurance cover. Yeah. Well, that's it for personal finance this evening. A big thank you once more to Stephen Isaacs. He's from Lion of Africa. Now, we want to hear from you, so get in touch with us. You can tweet any of your comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Gugum on Twitter. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.